Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Thank you very much for watching. I have something here from Scotland. I have something from Glenmorey. I visited the distillery in the in March of 2019 and this was bottled in 2018. It was distilled 2016, so it's 12 years old and this is called the Master's Distillers Collection. Now I paid, um, or this goes for 139 euros 90, so 140 euros over here in Germany. It's, um, there's a story behind this and there's two stories I wanna tell. First of all, I wanna tell the story of the label. If you look at the label, it looks like somebody almost tried to kill it because it was me. So I picked up the bottle just like I did now and I felt this and it's like, wait a second, there's indentations below here, the label. So I'm gonna pour this, have it a little bit of time in my um, glass and then tell the story here. So what I did is I destroyed my label. This was a bottle share, so it's gonna be empty anyways by tomorrow afternoon. So I pulled off the right side, I pulled off the left side here, and I pulled it down in the middle as well. <coughs> and there were actually here, what they did is, they, um, you can almost see this now here, they actually put the label on the wrong side. So see those indentations there? Those indentations are there to actually um, position the bottle when the label is added. So especially if you have a bottling line, you need to have those indentation, indentations. So the bottle turns and it clicks and then you whoop, whoop, run it through there and you get the labels. Apparently this was hand labeled and somebody decided not to do this side um, with the real label, but that side. Unfortunately, that happened here. And the second thing, which I think is kind of cool or wrong or whatever, is this is basically a it's a, it's a pine. So some people like that. Um, it's very very um, something I made in the eighth grade in woodworking class. To be honest, um, yes, you can do that, but no, you don't have to do that. And the last thing I want to mention is we had here our master distiller way back when, and I'm going to mention that as well. Graham Cool Master Distiller Glen Mori. I remember going there and they were so proud of having basically in the last 70 years, three master distillers, I think it was. And so they would really show the people and be able to tell the stories and so on. And then along, um, then Graham Cool went over to Dingle. Dingle has a brand new um, expansion project um, applied for it and is going to do it in 2022, which I think is fantastic. Then came um, Dr. Um, Kirsty McCallum. She stayed there for months, maybe 18, I don't know. And now they're, um, the person on the website who's responsible for everything is called the Global Brand Ambassador. Really? The Global Brand Ambassador is responsible for the master distiller duties, who knows? It's Ian Allen. Now I watched this guy, I think it was the Space Side Whiskey Festival. He's great. Uh, I love it and as a role of a representative, he's exactly right. As the role of the blending and the innovation uh, person, Maybe, maybe not. All right, so um, according to my nice little book here, um, Glen Mori belongs to, and I always have problems remembering that wonderful name here, that is La uh, Martinique, or Mar La Martinez. And um, yeah, that's a French company. Most of the whiskey goes into Cuddy Zark, Cuddy Shark. Um, label number five, especially, is a big brand in um, France and also in the Sir Edwards blend. And then a lot of, at least over in Germany, you have a lot of 20 euro, 25 euro bottles of Glen Mori, no age statement, that have different um, wine finishes, Bordeaux and Chardonnay and so on. And then what you have are excellent, excellent single cask, hand-filled stuff that you can buy at the distillery and sometimes at independent bottlers. All right, so 140 euros is a lot of money. Now I have another problem here that this box says on the front, um, Bourbon and Ololoso Sherry Cask. What did they do? Is it hybrid? No, of course not. They had one bourbon cask, maybe, which doesn't work in my brain either. And then they usually take two bourbon casks and put it into one Ololoso cask. I could find no information whatsoever how many bottles were in that cask. So if you can find anything out, this was cask number 99505 and it was distilled in 2006. Now, if you look on the bottle, it says here, there's an S. So it says bourbon and Ololoso sherry casks. And then it says cask number 994505. So only the last cask has to be mentioned in Scotland. And so um, whatever was beforehand um, doesn't really matter. But thank you for giving the information that it was originally um, matured in bourbon cask. And then it was finished in a 
um, Odalozo Sherry Cask. What they're doing here is what Graham Cole was trying to do here, according to what he wrote inside, is create a harmony, a, 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 a mixture of the bourbon vanillas and the bourbon cask with the sherry cask. So this is not a sherry bomb. It does have a good color, but it actually should have a mix of those two worlds together. All right, so. So this is 12 years old. Um, this is 52.8%. Uh, I'm going to pull out something 12 years old. This was 140 euros. This is 120 euros. This was um, bottled in 2021. This is a signatory vintage uh, cast strength collection. I've already done my video on this as well. And I thought this would be a, maybe an okay comparison. All right. So pull up my glass here, put a little bit more in here. Um, this was actually, first of all, um, it says at least here, uh, initial maturation, refill hogsheads, and then finished in a fresh sherry bud for 23 months, cast number five. So at least it tells me how long it was actually matured. Now I was watching a spring side, spring side, side spring bank um, live stream. There was a whole week of live streams at the beginning of May. And they talked about how um, there's been an enormous increase in information um, uh, needed to, to give to the geeks. Uh, 20 years ago, no one cared about where the sherry cask frame came from. No one. No one cared about what type of bourbon cask you use. Was it Buffalo Hill? Buffalo Hill. Was it Heaven Hill? Was it Buffalo Trace? Was it Wild Turkey? No one cared. Oh, it's a bourbon cask. Yay, thank you. Oh, it's a sherry cask. What type? Ololozo. Yes. What, bodega? Really? You want to know that? Even 10 years ago, they said hardly anyone ever asked anything. We do have our records, but for the last 10 years, the, um, the need of the geeks to know where the heritage and the um, lineage of these whiskeys are um, has increased exponentially. They were just, they were actually shaking their head as if that was um, really, really, is that really, really necessary to know all that information? Well, some of the new distilleries, I'm just going to name um, Atnamachan, I'm going to name um, Waterford, I'm going to name a few others, are using technology to actually, Bruchladig started with that, to give us with QR codes, with um, codes, with uh, bottle numbers to be able to find bottle codes, to be able to find out the information we need about the cask, about the entire transparency from the grain to the glass, which most of us are not willing to... Um, are not absolutely we're, we're, not, we're not against it but it's like sometimes too much information but some of us love it all right if you look at the color here you do see that the bourbon casks were a little bit here more than the fresh sherry butt with 23 months over here with the Blair Evo. so um 120 140 euros i basically find this whiskey way way too expensive i said in my german video i'm going to repeat that here as well um, if I was at the distillery, and by the way, the distillery uses exactly this color on the walls, and it's a nice little cafe there, it's a nice little place to go. At least they had a cafe before the um, <laughs> corona crisis happened. Um, very, very good thing. You could do hand-fill bottles there. And for 99 um, pounds or 99 euros, um, 99 pounds you're in Scotland, um, it was actually a wonderful experience to bottle your own and do that. And they were great, great bottles. So you had at the distillery the experience of bottling yourself, labeling yourself, doing all that. That's a very, very special moment. I'm going to pay more for that. All right. And so that would have been okay for 99 euros. But 140 euros for a bottle I didn't bottle where they put the sticker on the wrong side and where I basically have a pine coffin as a special box. I must admit this whiskey is way overpriced. Why did I buy it? I have a super fan. Super fans are people on Patreon to support me and said, Jason, could you buy this bottle from Glen Mori? And I was like, oh, that's very, very expensive. And I went to my wholesaler, looked at the list, found four bottles that were there. said, pick one. I'd buy one and I'd share it. He picked one. I bought it. I shared it. It's gone. And that's why I have this here. I would never have picked this bottle myself. But I like helping my super fans get their hands on bottles, at least samples of bottles, that they would otherwise never want to buy themselves. Because it's like, oh, is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. And before I buy the bottle, I might want to try it. All right. On the nose... Yeah, sherry, light, and a little bit of a vanilla sweetness from the barrels. 
Over here, we have more of a darker brown sugar moment. Interesting. So this is much sweeter sherry, a fruitier sherry, more vibrant sherry. This is uh, exactly what they wanted, exactly what Graham Cole wanted, was a mixture of the bourbon as well as the sherry moments coming together and creating a nice marriage of um, flavors. It's not a sherry bomb, nor should it be. 52.8%. Let's try it. 12 years old, 140 euros. Expensive. Did I mention that? Yes. Mm. A little too ex too much heat. There's a lot of heat and there's a little bit of astringency. It's somewhat dry. Pulling all the, the saliva from my gums here. The wood moment is there. There's a little bit of a mocha type of European oak going on, which I don't disagree with. This is a nice whiskey. It's not a bad. It's a little bit too dry. It's a little bit too hot. This is a C plus whiskey. Yay. Now, I paid 140 euros for it. This is going to be a, a, a D whiskey for value for money. As I said, if it was a hand fill at the, at the distillery, I'm going to pay maybe 20 bucks more because of the experience. Um, and therefore, I get to have a memory. I get to take a picture of myself doing it and so on. I would be willing to pay the 99 euros basically there. This is for me the maximum 80 euros. Maybe even 65 would be the price I would want to pay for this taste experience. And yet it's more than double that price. More than double. Wow. And this is a whiskey bottle from the year 2018. This was before the prices went crazy, crazy. Yes, they were going crazy. But in the last six months, at least over here in Europe, the prices have gone crazy, crazy. I used to say between 10, about 10% a year. Now they're doing 50% in two months sometimes. So this whiskey, 120 euros, as I mentioned. The Blair Ethel. They took bourbon hogshead, shoved it into a um, fresh sherry butt, and just let it set for 23 months. They bottled it, paid good money for it. 12 years old and 120 euros, 10 euros per year for this. And it's 50, I always forget, 54.4%. Cheers. Hmm. More of a syrupy type of moment, much sweeter, much more brown sugar, much more of a fruitiness as well. More of the plum, more of the blackberries, more of the uh, like a, a, a sweet currant, if you can imagine that. Um, wow, this is a very sherry bomb, and of course, I can't really tell you if it's from Blair Ethel or from Ben Linus or from any place else because the sherry is so dominant that it overtakes the entire flavor profile. This, on the other hand, you can still maybe imagine what's happening from the distillery, but maybe not. Yeah, one last try here. I'm going to add a tiny little bit more water just to see what happens. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad whiskey. It's just not living up to my expectations here for 140 euro whiskey. Uh, with a little bit of water, the vanilla comes through. It's got a very nice balanced moment. It's a good whiskey. It's, it's almost a B minus minus a C plus plus with water, actually. But I'm not willing to pay that price. I do have some tasting notes on here. Whoops. Killing the, um, the label again. Taste. It says full bodied and well balanced caramel toffee um, laced with fine dark chocolate and ground coffee, European oak. The finish was warm spice combined with um, bittersweet dark chocolate, um, creating a long, smooth finish. On the nose, I should have gotten some creamy vanilla toffee, some dark chocolate with dark fruits. All right, very good. European oak was involved here, definitely, from the tasting description as well as from my tasting experience. Well done, well done, well done. Just overpriced. Either the, the distillery was a little bit high with the price or my um, wholesaler was a little bit high in the price. That's the way it is. But this bottle was bottled. Um, this expression was bottled in 2018. So it's been sitting around for almost five years now. 
discount it. Get rid of it and move on. My personal opinion. All right. Thank you very much. Um, question of the day is, what is your favorite Glen Mori expression? I really, really enjoyed the Madeira. That was great. The rum was okay. And the third one, I totally forgot which one it was. Mm. Um, but there's also new expressions coming out all the time from Glen Mori. Some of the hand fills I've had were just absolutely mind-blowingly good. And also some of the malt men expressions from Glen Mori have been wow. I had one um, that was just so good that it actually created a whole... Um, a whole tasting and a whole just desire to learn more about Glen Mori itself and also um, the Maltman expressions. Um, supermarket whiskeys from them, yes or no, I mean under $30. Um, and above that, sometimes you get a beauty in between. All the best. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for sharing this video maybe on social media. And thank you very much um, for commenting as well. What is your favorite Glen Mori expression? Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. Tasting a lot of single cast expressions. Things you might not ever see. All the best. See you later. Bye bye.